My interest in naturalism began as an outgrowth from an exhibition that I organized in 1980 known as the Realist Tradition. It's an exhibition that opened at the Cleveland Museum of Art and then moved on to Glasgow and to other museums in the United States. And there was a section in this exhibition uh, in the latter part of the show that focused on the beginnings of a naturalist movement surrounding artists who were uh, exhibiting at the salons, the public exhibitions of the 19th century. And since that time, I've become really uh, concerned and obsessed with how the naturalist artists created their own work, what they used to make their works, and how these works were publicly accessible in the 19th century. Research demonstrated that the naturalists were quite often inspired and influenced by photographs. And in some cases, the photographs were taken by the artists themselves so that they could use these photographs as the basis for the making of their paintings. In the case of the current exhibition at the Van Gogh Museum, Illusions of Reality, we start the show with a very distinct case study of an artist by the name of Jules Alexis Meunier, who is both a painter and a photographer. And a very interesting part about this artist's work is that he not only used photographs to help achieve a objective point of view in his works, but he also was very interested in exhibiting his own photographs publicly. He wasn't afraid of hiding the interest in photography from others, as many other painters in the 19th century actually were. At the same time as exploring the works of Meunier, we became very strongly interested in how naturalism gained an adherence through novels, especially the novels of Emile Zola, and also through the popularization of Zola's plays, plays that were put on in the Parisian theaters with the hope that they would reach a very strong mass audience. Once this was done, the plays by Zola weren't always that successful, but the idea that naturalism had to reach a strong public and that the public had to be made aware of uh, art for society, art with social themes, art for the masses, became one of the prerequisites that we developed in trying to make the case for an international naturalist style, an international naturalist approach that was found not only in France, but in almost all other countries simultaneously throughout the 1880s and the 1890s, meaning that there are naturalist painters in England and in Scotland and very definitely in Belgium and, of course, throughout Scandinavia and even in the United States. All of these artists created a style that was visually similar, and many of them dealt with social themes that were appropriate for the times, and also social themes that talked to the issues of the betterment of humanity. One of the painters who had a very strong socialist point of view was a French artist by the name of Jules Adler. And one of the paintings in the exhibition that we have exhibited in Illusions of Reality is a painting that focuses on a strike in the industrial middle part of, the, of France known as Le Cruzo. This particular painting also seems to have been a painting that eventually influenced a filmmaker by the name of Capellani. And Capellani was very interested in photographing and developing on site a strike scene, a strike scene that had never been attempted before, even though it had been shown in the visual arts by the painting of Adler. So one of the basic ideas that we are dealing with in this exhibition is that all of the visual arts were interrelated with one another, that there was indeed a international naturalist style, and that many of these artists had a point of view, and a point of view that demonstrated that the visual arts could say something about humanity, about the people, about ways in which people lived, that people at the time could fundamentally relate to, understand, and see. And that's really what we have tried to do in Illusions of Reality. The interrelationship between painting, literature, photography, and cinema. These are crucial points to make art more available to the general public so that it will reference uh, how 
the people of the time actually lived. And I think this is one of the key points that many of the art critics of the time talked about. They saw naturalism as a way of creating an art for the public. And when these paintings were exhibited in public exhibitions like the salons or at the world's fairs, the general public could understand these paintings. So naturalism also has, a, has as, at its core the interest in having art become understandable with people that look lifelike, the people who are dressed in the clothes of the times. These are key points and they are, I think, uh, strongly visualized in different sections. The artists involved in naturalism were coming to terms with new technologies in the 19th century, early 20th. And they were using these new technologies such as photography and early film to expand the parameters of what was possible in the creative world. I think photography is valuable. Photography is an aid memoir for many of these artists. Uh, naturalist paintings may not have been uh, developed as precisely and as carefully without artists looking at photography as well as the world around them. But after all, my, many of these painters, like Jules Alexis Meunier, were not only using photography, they were using their models. And one of the things that we have discovered is that uh, even when he was, uh, when Jules Alexis Meunier was making photographs in Coudavant, he was also working from models of people in the community, combining them all together, posing his models in what we now know was a glass studio on his property in Coudavant, and then going back to the photographs and then placing the painting out of doors. So it's a very complex process that these artists are engaged in, engaged in, in dealing with the creation of these illusions of reality.